I thought for a minute I had missed prime leaf bag season this year, but then I went out last night and noticed it turns out it's leaf bag prime moment. All of the folks in the neighborhood are raking up all of the fertility that their trees spend all year pulling out of the atmosphere and up from the subsoil and from the rain and from the sun and uh, pack it away in bags that they pay a dollar a piece for. They use their weekend to rake it all up, put it in a bag, and then they pay a dollar for the town to pick them up. But I grab them before then. So this is just uh, the very beginning here. This is the first 10 bags. My plan is to be a little bit more organized this year. And uh, I'll end up putting just a, I've got a fence on this side. I've got the greenhouse on that side. And I've got my composting bays that are a little bit more organized for finishing and extracting. So this fall's uh, compost that I'll send up to the garden is in here. And this will be the the next round of compost that gets moved in. So once this is out, I'll unify this whole area into just a massive playground of leaves and we'll put a ton of seed into it and the chickens will pick through it. I've got a few more bags in here to dump, a few more bags in the truck. I got a nice old Ford F-150. I can get about 25 or 30 bags around in there and it's only about a mile away. So. The amount of carbon we can take from folks' yards is off the charts. So that my friend's coming to visit tonight, and uh, we'll hang out for a few minutes, then probably truck into town and see what we can grab. And by morning, this should be, our land should be about a foot taller <laughs> in the whole chicken yard. A uh, really great way to create a huge amount of mineral input for the property, create insulation and windbreak and activity for the chickens, insulate the soil to keep earthworm activity, really high all winter so I can go through and open up uh, unfrozen soil for the chickens to work with and it really gives them a lot of pleasure to have all these new novel areas to work in and once we add in the seed it should actually be a really great source of food let's see if that tumbles <laughs> I had a feeling that would happen all right anyway additional side value of these bags so you can partially empty or fully empty or pack them even tighter and uh, here around our coop the chickens come out on the really cold days they like to go under the coop in part to get out of the wind and out of the cold and so now with the bags packed there they act as insulative wind breaks I've got a little gap so the chickens can come and go from there and a little gap over here that they can go in and out and down here there's less wind they also need access and I need to be able to get under just in case to check for eggs so these leaf bags uh, for the fall and winter will give them some additional protection in the spring when I pull them away there'll just be tons of earthworms and life under there so that'll be additional feed probably pretty hard to see but in the coop which is we're getting later in the day so it's getting a little dark but uh their deep litter bedding will be done with leaves for this winter as well. So nice and insulative, very absorbent, very carbon heavy, so they can poop in there a lot and uh, it'll absorb it for them. And then of course every bag, once they're dumped out, is now a source of really easy to pack away and transport and then lay out of sheet mulch material. So these will all move to the bigger farm along with the stack over by our firewood, they'll get packed back into the truck once we have a few more loads of leaves sent into the chicken yard. Pack them in, put a cinder block on top, send them up to the bigger orchard and farm and use them to sheet mulch and avoid having to till up there. I'll call it good on this video for now. If I have my way and it works out, we'll get another two truckloads tonight. I remember reading, so maybe somebody could comment and tell me if this sounds right. I remember reading that in a good, healthy, natural woodland environment, it takes about a hundred years of natural deposit from the trees to build an inch of topsoil. And taking all of this deposit from all these different acres and concentrating them into this tiny front yard, and then having all these little beasts, these dinosaurs go through and agitate, I wouldn't be surprised if we can generate uh, 
couple hundred years worth of topsoil growth from a free waste stream using little dinosaurs and leveraging people's strange choices of taking their land's fertility and packing it up. So pretty, pretty sweet way to leverage. Eventually I feel like people will get on board. Food is going to be more expensive, more toxic. There'll be a certain point where people say, you know what, I'm ready to grow food where I live and this waste stream will dry up, but for right now I'll take it. Thanks for watching. Oh, and maybe you hear in the background that grinding noise. That'll be another video, but I've come to hear wood chippers. Maybe you hear it. Wood chippers to me sound like ice cream trucks now. As a kid, I used to go run to find the ice cream truck. Now I go run to find the wood chipper. Three houses up, they're cleaning up a box elder and poplar. And when they're done, they're dumping all the chips here. It'll be another few hundred years worth of woodland deposit in a in a half hour, all just from asking a guy to dump dump at our spot. Ah, organic matter. Somehow readily available and abundant in our particular society at this particular moment in history. I'm interested to see how long that lasts. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Ooh, I love it when there's a full truckload in front of just one house. And around two. <laughs> Losing light, but just got home with the leaf bags in time for the ice cream truck. Oh wait, I mean wood chip truck <laughs> to drop a load too. I got my work cut out for me. Chickens are going to have some carbon to work with.